Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan, and thank you for watching my videos and supporting the channel. Okay, uh, better news than the last video. Uh, this tank had a fungus issue on a couple of those beautiful long fin white cloud mountain minnows, uh, as well as blackbeard algae on the budwood, the primary piece of driftwood that's in here. And I uh, reported about that and what I was going to do. And so I did it and here's an update and it's better news than um, the last video in terms of what was going on in the big display tank. But I don't wanna confuse anyone. There was uh, some body fungus on two of the fish in here uh, that I saw and a preponderance of blackbeard algae on this driftwood, which uh, still has blackbeard algae, but it's dying and thinning out. And so I'm delighted to report that as well as the treatment I used has appeared to work, have worked on the white cloud mountain minnows. They look great. Uh, and I don't see any more of those hideous little protuberances on the fish indicating a fungus or something along those lines. I used API's um, fin and body. It's a little less uh, invasive in terms of what it uh, does to the tank and the ecosystem. Uh, it still was an involved process involved uh, using a couple days of treatments and having to uh, replace the carbon uh, in the filter, I don't use that much carbon, but then I had to add it in to clear out the medicine after it was done. It took about a week and it really, really worked and it didn't hurt anything else, including shrimp uh, or snails. So that's good news. And for the blackbeard algae, it's not as brilliant an outcome, but I clipped, literally just chopped some of the wood that really was uh, so far gone, it was almost more algae than wood. And that might be part of the problem here. This wood isn't a commonly used aquascaping material. And I think it just basically degrades over time and becomes sort of mushy and absolutely conducive to uh, hardcore fungus. So I do have some manzanita wood and there will be a day when I replace that piece, but it isn't today because as you can see, I'm still digging the effect. Uh, even with less wood, it's actually better for the white clouds because after clipping all those pieces, it freed up more mid uh, ground aquarium space and this fish uh, appreciates that. And part of what I wanted to do moving forward to prevent fungus and heavier nitrates is just clear out um, just air out the tank, right? So I pulled a bunch of the veils out from the back. I trimmed a lot of this hygrophilia pinifada uh, and did a basic hardcore maintenance on everything else, you know, that was required for the fungus treatment, but it's also just good practice pretty much once a month to do a hardcore clean of everything from the filter uh, inside and outside the tank. So I've got um, nothing but good news now. Excuse the shaking and the reflection. I'm such an amateur. <laughs> um, but the, I'm liking the way the red and the green plants are thick and bushy up and in there, and then they sort of thin out. I've got this wonderful carpet of sterigen repens, a few interspersed with a few red stems. Um, the hygrophilia P, as I like to call it now, and then uh, the stem plant back here, the name escapes me as I video, very common aquarium plant. It gets red and green, uh, more of one color or the other, depending on light and parameters. And then this is a dwarf sedge, I think, and it was getting out of control, but so I clipped it from going anywhere past a certain point in the tank, and now, it's kind of an interesting carpet in and of itself. Uh, I could pull it all out and get a cleaner effect. What do you guys think? If anyone has an opinion, let me know, because it is violating an aesthetic on one level, but on another, it's doing really great. 
Um, it's a hidey hole for all the neocaridina that might be in here, not that white clouds are, are uh, intense predators. And it just, it looks cool, right? Depending on the angle. Now, from an over, if I was entering this tank in an aquascaping contest, I'd probably lose points because it, it creates a tension between the uh, mass back there and the mass here, uh, which is not uh, ideal in the aquascaping um, nomenclature, if you will. But screw it, I, 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 it's my hobby, it's my tank, and that's what I'm doing. There's some frog bit up here in this tank. It does the least well, but it's that's not a hardcore criticism. I give it a B here. I see more dead leaves, not as great downward roots. Over time, that things change, and as I corrected certain things in this tank, maybe I pulled some of the nitrogen out, um, the nitrates, some other parameters that affect how that plant um, operates in the world. But it's not a signature part of this tank. And I've got so much frog bit or water lettuce in the other tanks that I can just move uh, that stuff around. Uh, the substrate still looks really good. One of the things, I, you know, you see a few auto cats. There's a bunch in here. Um, there's a reticulated Siamese algae eater who's helped me with this uh, moss i should have mentioned that earlier that was a key part of how i treated for that those fish will really destroy blackbeard algae i think i said moss a moment ago i meant algae if it's uh half dead and by using hydrogen peroxide squirting it on the sticks when you do a water change you can begin a bit of a destruction on the moss here i go again on the uh, bba and the uh, invertebrates, a mono shrimp, uh, will be more inclined to eat that particular algae and the Siamese algae eaters will as well. It's just more palatable when it's dying, just like how snails appreciate um, dying plant matter. Uh, the same thing holds true for algae. So I have not solved that problem, but it's much more tolerable and more important because it, it speaks to the welfare and the uh, bigger picture on this tank. I didn't have to euthanize a fish. I was able to correct it. It wasn't uh, that much of a pain in the ass and it's gonna happen uh, to you too. So, uh, excuse me for being presumptuous. It's likely going to happen to every fish keeper, but the API fin and body is less of a gruesome uh, approach than uh, just using chemical warfare to treat that and um, general cure I could have gone that route as well as a few other methods but I used the fin and body I was happy and am happy with the outcome uh, before I s sign off you can see I moved this that great variegated pothos that emergent plant in the back it's in this really cool little plastic container you can see the root stock I found those online um, from a manufacturer in China, like six or seven bucks each. And they're really a neat way to harbor uh, emergent plants, uh, which also pull nitrates from the water and they look cool. Uh, and I think this whole tank looks pretty cool. I hope you agree. I wanted a good news video today because I was bumming over Thanksgiving regarding the display tank, I'll update you on that. Uh, I am making progress there and I will also make another video shortly. Okay, folks, as per usual, always keep your hands in the tank and ciao for now.